served by the Flood Bandit, his companion with a large canvas sack or a wallet in on one hand, began gathering up currency from the counters and dumping it into a bag. Disappointed at the amount of money in sight, he told Loper, you've got more money than this, where is it? Loper pointed to the bank safe, locked by a time lock during the day. Just then, the bank's automatic burglar alarm sounded outside the building on Church Street. That was located, located right here, right above that second window. The two-gun bandit immediately became nervous, calling to his companion, they're after us, so let's go. The leader replied that there was still plenty of time and continued his search for the money. The two-gun bandit, however, ran from the bank into the street with his accomplice in the blue suit, who stepped outside the bank, and the two stood on the corner, each holding two revolvers. And there he is, right there. where the foot doctor is. So a bullet went there also. 
Um, a little world history now. Sam Bixell, who had a dry goods store and is represented by his granddaughter, she, uh, allegedly ran out into the street because he heard the uh, sound of the fire alarm and may or may not have bumped into the gangster who spent So, and locked the store. Under cover of fire from his blue suited Confederate, the leader of the gang gathered his loot from the bank's counter, pocketed a revolver, and ran outside where he was joined by the two gun man and the machine gunner. The four, here we go, Kevin, clambered into their automobile with the motor running, waiting at the, waiting at the outside of the bank. With a fifth bandit at the wheel, they sped down Church Street. make their getaway. Harvey Shine, over here on the Presbyterian Church lawn, was waiting for a bus, and uh, the two gunmen in the corner took five shots at him. Justin Basinger, who was in a farmer's grain truck parked right here, was sitting watching things going on, and uh, the truck uh, was parked here. Basinger observed the shooting until one of the men pointed a gun in his direction when he sought cover. As the car sped away, Basinger said it had an Indiana license, but was unable to see the number. The figures were covered with dirt and mud. Both Basinger and Shine agreed that the bandit car was a green sedan. Basinger said it was a Chrysler or Pontiac. Some claimed that it was an Essex. Others claimed it was a Buick. <laughs> Mr. Damon, a school teacher who was standing out in front of the grade school at the time the car passed, saw it and described it as a light green sedan but was unable to make the uh, model. Gordon Bexel, who was also upstairs on the second floor, observed the affair from his office and said the car was grayish green. Harold Montgomery, filling station operator at North Main and Riley, heard the car coming north on Jackson Street at a high rate of speed. The car skidded as brakes were applied and slowed down for the Main Street intersection as they sped north over the Dixie Highway. This car, Montgomery said, contained a number of men and appeared in great haste. The car was a Chevrolet. And now our eyewitnesses can start moving back here. We're going to have you join us. Uh, but scarcely had the robbers gone that a large crowd gathered at the bank corner as news of the holdup spread rapidly through the business district. And get this, Allen County Sheriff deputies arrived on the scene from Lima within 15 minutes after the alarm sounded. I don't think I could get from Lyman to Bluffton today in 15 minutes. And then, as we're all out on the street buzzing along, Edgar Houndstone, the pharmacist, who was the, described as the most distinguished gentleman in Bluffton, comes out in his white pharmacy jacket, walks into the street and says, after the bandits left. Now I'll give you, uh, at the uh, bank was closed for the day, and uh, of course the bank, the robbery scene was obliter obliterated by the townies who came into the bank, so the, the crime scene was destroyed. The bank was closed for one day, and the loss of money was obtained by the robbers is fully covered by insurance, says Dr. C. Henry Smith, bank president. Just one more oral story about this. As the uh, car took off toward Finley, it got back on Main Street, 
And if you knew Dick Halbecker, you could uh, kind of translate this story. Dick was a pretty good storyteller. He has a gas station right across from where the Chinese restaurant is. He says before the gang came into town, they stopped and filled up their tank. They were well-dressed gentlemen, very polite. On their way out of town, they honked and waved to <laughs> If that was a movie, that'd be the end. So, I want to invite the eyewitnesses back here. And uh, we're going to repeat this again. I and mean, certainly, they may have something they want to say. Remember, there's some, there's some water here in the Miller uh, Law Office. So when it was all over, um, Harry Bogart says, I just went back to my chair and sat down and sat there for the rest of the day. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.